Hi everybody, welcome to, well actually not everybody. Hi Scott, this lesson is for you. If you're anybody else that happens to be watching this video, great, you're welcome to watch along. If you actually know how to play guitar, you're really gonna hate this video, so don't watch it. But this is for my buddy Scott, who just got himself a guitar, like this. And he has no musical abilities whatsoever, so he needs all the help he can get. And I looked on the internet, and I didn't find anything that was great for the very basic step one beginner. So this is all for the basic step one beginner. Step one beginner. This is a guitar. It's an acoustic guitar, but it's a guitar. This is a guitar. It's an electric guitar, but it's a guitar. This is a banjo. It's not a guitar. So back to the guitar. Scott, I hope you're keeping up with me so far. You know what? Maybe you should click subscribe, ring the little bell so you can find this video again, come back, and I'm going to go over everything really quick. But this is your guitar. Here are the parts of the guitar. You need to know the guitar in order to play it because there's a certain linguistics that goes along with it. This is the body. We'll call this the body. We'll call this the neck. Up to here, we call this the headstock. Right here is the nut. And then each one of these little lines, they're called frets. These little metal things, okay? That's where we make our notes. We fret our notes. There's strings. Your guitar should have six strings at this point because it's brand new. Now, if you just picked up a guitar out of your grandmother's basement, it might have five or four strings, in which case you should probably put some strings on it. Whole nother video. These strings, okay? You have to tune them. To tune your guitar, I'd recommend you get an app for your phone. You can just put the phone on your lap like, like this, if this was your phone, and you tune, you hit the strings, okay? And it will tell you the notes, and you tune it. If you want to be fancy, you can buy a little portable clip-on tuner. They come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. This one here just clips onto the headstock of the guitar. I said this was the headstock and these are the tuners or the tuning pegs if you want to call them that. That's fine. So the first string we want to tune is an E. You can see there it's not quite in that little blue area on this one so we just want to turn it down a bit. See that goes down. Turn it one way or another should be counterclockwise to make it go up. There's E, the next one is gonna be an A. The next one's gonna be a D. That's close enough for folk. This one's gonna be a G. And the next one will be a B. And the next one is E. I have written it out here on this piece of paper. E, A, D, G, B, E. For your reference, this is, this is the nut. These are the little tuning pegs. These are the strings that come down. The graphic department is lacking in this. I, I do appreciate that. I apologize. These are the frets. Now, how on earth are you going to remember E, A, D, G, B? And let's note, there's a little E there. This is kind of a standard way of doing it. So if you see an E written as a capital E, then that means this big, fat E string. The low E string. If it's the high E string, it's usually written with a little E, okay? There's lots of different ways you can Google how to remember the names of your strings. The way I was taught was every American dog gets bones easily. That's how I said little, little E there for easily. Okay, you're keeping up so far, Scotty? Okay, we're gonna learn three chords today. That's your introduction to the guitar, by the way. Three chords today, just for you. We're gonna learn the G chord, the C chord, and the D chord. All right, now you don't have to get them all perfect right away, but I'm gonna show you how to do them, and you got a whole week to practice. Now here's the thing. This finger is, idea, is the first finger, is the second finger, the third finger. For anyone playing along at home, I'm actually left-handed, so these numbers actually worked out pretty good. And we'll, we'll put the fourth. We're not going to use the fourth finger today here. There's your fourth finger. Got it? 
One, two, three, four. This is called your thumb, in case you're wondering. That's your anatomy lesson for today, kids. <clears throat> the G chord. Take your second finger, put it on the third fret of the first string, the E string. Take your first finger, the one that's number one, put it here on the second string. This is the A string, the second fret of the second string. Got it? Leave all the rest open. You're probably gonna have to do this with your finger. Take your third finger and put it down here on the very bottom E string, okay? On the third fret. It's a finger buster. So it's a little hard to get your fingers in the shape naturally. Here's what you can do. One, if you're sitting on the couch like this, you're screwed. Get a chair, sit nice and upright. You can hold your guitar on your lap like this. You can hold it like this. There's no right and wrong. You can have it on a strap and stand up. All is good. The trick is, depending on the size of your fingers, and I know Scott, you got fat fingers, so I'm not sure how it's gonna fit in all these little spots here. Take your thumb, hold it on the back of the neck. It's all gonna feel awkward, but eventually you're gonna get comfortable with it. And you take your fingers and you put them in the shape. You may have to put your thumb like this on the back of the neck in the middle to help your hand arch, but you don't wanna strain anything. Just hold it comfortably. Now I can kind of hold it a little loosey-goosey. My thumb can kind of come up around. Depends on the size of your hand and everything else. So find your happy, comfortable position. And I appreciate, Scott, none of these are gonna be comfortable right off the bat. Second finger, third fret, here we are. First finger, second string, second fret. All these other ones are empty or are open. And then the last string, again, put your finger down there on that E string. You should be able to strum. You, I don't know if you, do you have a pick? Did you get picks? A pick, this is a guitar pick. Sometimes referred to as a plectrum. Let's just call it a pick. If you have a pick, that's great. Hold it in your hand so it's comfortable. There, again, there's no right and wrong. I kind of hold it like this between your thumb and your forefinger. And you can <laughs> strum. Maybe you're just, you're gonna use your thumb and your fingers to strum. I'll just use my nail here. We'll just do this today. No guitar picks required. If you have a pick though, feel free to use a pick. Okay, so now what we wanna do is start at the very top string, the low E string, and just strum down. They should all sound just like that. Notice each note rings out. It's kind of pretty, right? Yours probably sounds like this right now. If your hand's starting to cramp up because it's been in this position for so long, Totally understand, take it off, shake it out. Don't cramp, you don't wanna cramp, okay? It'll get easier the more you play. So here's what you do. We're just gonna do the G chord right now. Take your your imaginary pick or whatever you do, just strum down. We're gonna count the four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now if I'm counting too fast for the strums, I know, Scott, you got no rhythm. I've heard you play the spoons, buddy. Just work on getting the notes to ring out. You want it to sound like that, as best you can, as best you can. Okay? I think your G chord is sounding pretty good. This is fairly standard, okay? These are little chord pictograms. Again, the graphic department apologizes for the uh, high-techness of this. Let me give you a little rundown on how to read this. This is the G chord we just did, okay? This is where the nut is. This is where the strings go up to the tuning pegs. These lines represent the frets. The first fret, the second fret, the third fret. Remember the frets are these little metal bars that are right here, right? These dots represent the notes that you have to hold down on the string. Does that make sense? So we had our finger, our second finger was on the third fret of the low E string, the first string. Our second finger was on the second fret of the second string we didn't have anything on these other strings and we had our third finger down here on the third fret of the high e string of the sixth string if you count them as numbers one two three four five six does that make sense again go back and review if you have to so sometimes you'll see on these little pictograms you'll see just this picture 
And you'll also see on the very top here where the nut is, where your finger gets, I know this, this isn't very good because I used a purple pen, I apologize. The graphics department apologizes. That's a two for your second finger. That's a one for your first finger. And these little O's mean they're open. And then this one here has a three because that's your third finger. Let's move over to the C chord that we're gonna learn next. You'll notice it's got the dots on the frets, the same frets, tells you where your fingers are gonna go. But you notice this one right here has got an X on it. The X means you don't hit that string. Okay? It's the tricky part. So let's do the C chord. We're gonna take our third finger and put it on the second string at the third fret. Right? We're gonna take our second finger, put it on the third string of the second fret. We're gonna skip a string, which is the G string. We're gonna put our first finger on the first fret. And the last string, the E string, is open. Okay, this is a C chord. Remember there was the X on the little thing, so we don't wanna hit, we don't wanna hit that string. That sounds bad. That sounds pretty. Got it? There's our C chord. You with me, Scott? Fingers getting sore? Shake it off. Don't get frustrated. Don't get cursing. These, you can't throw them around like a computer. Patience. It will come. Now, again, the chords, the notes may sound like this when you strum it. Right? So work on getting your fingers arched over there as best you can. And push down. Okay? Now, if you're lucky, here's a little pro tip. As you get more comfortable with it, if you're lucky and your hand's big enough and your thumb can kind of reach around, you can just, just touch that E string like that. And if you accidentally hit the E string, it doesn't really ring out. If you don't get that, you get... Okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Got it? So far, so good. Let's do the D chord. If you could, so kind of camera person. Wife of YouTuber, you should check her out. She's awesome. This is the D chord. See where we're going to put our fingers. There's a D shape there. There's an X and an X. So what does that mean? We don't ring hit those strings. Let's take our first finger and put it on the, what was it? One, two, three, fourth string. Let's take our second finger and put it on the sixth string and take this open, this, this finger here, the three, our third finger, and put it on the third fret of the fifth string. So it's gonna look like that. Remember, we don't hit the first two top strings. Remember, that's, that's gonna sound like this. That sounds bad. We want it to sound like this. It's pretty, okay? So again, your hand shape is gonna be awkward, and you probably had to use your finger to put this one in here because it doesn't wanna do it on its own. It will eventually go in on a, <laughs> it will fall into place. Muscle memory, they call this, okay? So what I want you to do for this week, there's a G chord, there's a C chord, and there's a D chord, okay? All I really want you to focus on is making this G chord sound like a G chord. Hand cramps up, shake it up. Do it again. You want the strings to ring out. Put it in the C shape. When you get bored of the G, put it in the C. Again, you don't want to hit this. You don't want that string to ring out, so you gotta sort of practice where you're hitting the string. We're not worried about strumming. We're not worried about anything musical. This is somewhat musical. And then put it on the D shape. Start on the fourth string, the D string. You got it? Okay, so that's my lesson for today. How long was that, Sue? 17 and a half minutes. Holy crap. I'm going to have to really edit this down. But I hope you like this, Scott. Good luck. See you next Friday.